Buzzards Bay on the south coast of Massachusetts. Good sailing weather, the striped bass are biting. And in Mattapoisett, the views from the historic light at Ned's Point, built to guide whaling ships to safe harbor, are as spectacular as ever. It's the kind of summer Conrad Roy would have loved. Conrad's aunt, Kim Bozzi. Tell me about him as he was growing up. He was kind of like the instigator in our family. He's the kid that never got in trouble. He'd start the trouble, but he somehow got away with it. Athletic? Oh, yeah. Played baseball. He loved baseball. Conrad, whose family calls him Coco, excels, at least academically, in high school. He graduates in 2014 with good grades and test scores high enough to win him a free ride at a state college. But he's unsure whether to go off to school or join the family tugboat business. And did Conrad like it? Yeah, he loved it. He loved being on the water. He got his captain's license at the age of 18, which is pretty, pretty awesome. A life by the sea with so much promise. But Conrad is adrift. Hi, this is Conrad Henry Roy III, reporting to you about what's going on through my mind, what's going on through my head the last few days. Confiding deep so emotional distress in private video diaries. I've created a monster out of myself the past few years because of my depression, racing thoughts, suicidal thoughts. It is a hard video to watch. I think we see a very troubled teenager who's obviously going through a multitude of emotions and issues. The hardest thing for me is to be comfortable in my own skin. After his parents' divorce in 2011, he begins a downward spiral. Depression, a stay in a psychiatric facility, and several attempts at suicide. I feel, what's the word? I feel like I'm differently wired from everyone else. But this story really begins with his chance encounter with a girl. Conrad meets Michelle Carter while both are visiting relatives in Florida. She's a year younger and lives in Plainville, an hour north of Conrad's hometown. Like Conrad, she's athletic, a softball player. Coach Ed McFarland says she was a decent shortstop and a nice girl. Quiet kid, never known her to do a mean thing. Would do whatever she could to help me in the process. Classmates would later vote Michelle most likely to brighten your day. But Sarah Conge, a reporter for ABC Boston affiliate WCVB, says Michelle was also struggling. She suffered from depression and she had an eating disorder. We know she took antidepressants. Something that seemed to bother Michelle most, making and keeping friends. But Michelle's new friend, Conrad, apparently fills the void. They fall into an intense Facebook texting all hours of the day and night, on again, off again, virtual romance. One even Conrad's mother knew very little about. Does she know who she is? She just thought she was an acquaintance of Conrad's, nothing more. In fact, we can't find a single photo of the teens together. They meet in person only two or three times. The relationship almost entirely electronic. They were intimate with each other over text message because they talked so much about their personal feelings. But were they a traditional boyfriend and girlfriend? It's hard to say. But the relationship is clearly intense. Conrad sends Michelle this selfie. If you only knew what's inside my head. In a Facebook exchange early on, Conrad tells Michelle about his brush with death. I tried to kill myself. How did you try to kill yourself? Do you still want to? No, I'm going to. Just letting you know, the voices in my head tell me to. Later, he confides he's planning to try again. I want to die. I know you want to and you research it and everything, but are you actually really going to do it? Yeah, if I can find a way to 100% work. He tells her pretty definitively early on that he wants to die and that he has a plan to die and that he's going to do it. By the summer of 2014, Conrad, on his own, combs the internet hundreds of times, searching terms such as cyanide, death by cop, and easy ways to find poisons. He sends Michelle a photo of a rifle and a noose hanging from a tree. 
Then Conrad hints they should do something together. We should be like Romeo and Juliet at the end. Ha ha, I'd love to be your Juliet. But do you know what happens at the end? Oh, yeah. No, we are not dying. Dan Glon's a reporter for Mass Live, a digital news outlet. There's these weeks and weeks of messages where Conrad Roy is saying, I'm depressed, I want to die. And he says this to her over and over. She's overwhelmed by this caretaker role she has with her boyfriend. She can't handle it. Michelle, also emotionally fragile, repeatedly tries to talk him out of it. Conrad, stop. You're not going to do it. I know you won't. I don't want you to. No, I actually am. You have so much to live for. Please don't. For two years, the relationship builds, the star-crossed teens discussing all kinds of things online. But Conrad's obsession with suicide runs through it like a sinister thread. And for most of that time, Michelle consistently encouraging him to get help. I'm never going to be better. I have to accept that. You're in a dark tunnel, but it's not going to last forever. You'll find the light someday. She's encouraging him to stay alive. She's trying to pull him away from that darkness. When she's hospitalized for an eating disorder, she asks Conrad to join her. You aren't going to get better on your own. You need professional help like me, people who know how to treat it and fix it. Conrad warns Michelle not to tell anyone who could stop him, and she doesn't. And the only way I'd hate you is if you told people about this. You hear me? I'm not going to tell anyone, because if I did, then you'd have to go to a hospital, and I know that's not what you want. On the 4th of July, 2014, Conrad is talking more and more about ending his life. I wish I had a gun. Would you use it? Yes. His family says they know nothing about these messages and think he's feeling better emotionally. The morning of July 12th seems to begin as a typical summer day for Conrad Roy. He goes to Horseneck Beach with his mom and younger sisters. They walked on the beach, and his mother talks about how he seemed more optimistic. She kind of felt a little more encouraged that maybe he was moving forward, and that it was a good day. Ominously, though, instead of swimming or sunbathing, Conrad spends most of the afternoon in the car, feverishly texting with someone. That evening, Conrad tells his mom he's going to see a friend. His mother asks, will you be home for dinner? And he says he doesn't know, he doesn't think so. And that's the last thing that he says to his mother. Her son drives off in his black pickup truck and disappears into the summer night. And that was the last time anyone in his family saw him alive. <laughs>